are you guys? Tell me I'm going to say a whole other convention. <laughs> like all of these shows are going back to back on me right now. Welcome to Tidewater Comic Con. Thank you all for coming out. Um, really, guys, uh, really appreciate you guys coming. Um, I am Patrick Michael Strange with the New Release Wednesday show, Cost Love, and as of like a week ago, Con, con Show Runner with Wakama Con, if you all heard about that in the news. Kind of got a lot of, of fame off of this, which is really cool. So anyway, um, I put together Totally Awesome Asians uh, with a bunch of friends of mine because I think we've been doing our thing with pop culture and not getting a lot of love for it. Um, so it's about time we kind of showed ourselves up and started honoring those of us within the industry that are doing it and uh, kind of, you know, building upon that even more. And with that, I have some amazing cosplayer friends with me who I love so much. They're like family. And it's like straight up Filipinos representing on this panel. Oh, my Filipinos hat. And all my Asian Pacific Islanders and allies who I see in the crowd. Thank you to everyone here. Really appreciate that. So uh, let me introduce uh, to my immediate right. Uh, the queen of the panel here, Viva Valentina. What's up, girl? Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Viva Valentina. I've been cosplaying for about eight years now. Um, I am Miss Tisa, biracial. What's up? Yes, uh, Born and raised in Hampton Roads, which hosts one of the largest Filipino American culture, um, uh, populations on the East Coast. So, woo -woo, represent. Woo -woo. We've been here. We, yeah. um, <laughs> And um, yeah, it's really excited to see the rise in diversity that's been happening lately, and um, here to talk about it. All right. And Maui, who doesn't love Maui? Who didn't love Moana? Come on, y'all. Can, can I get some love for Moana? Oh, oh amazing. Ooh, yeah. I know y'all know the song. There you go. <laughs> my brother from another mother, my Kuya Canvas Cosplay. Hello, hello, hello. Um, my name is Philip Adango of Canvas Cosplay. I have been cosplaying for several years now, um, and I was actually born in the Philippines, and I immigrated here when I was two years old. Had to do the whole ESL, English as a Second Language, to learn culture here. Um, both my parents are from the Philippines, although recently I took the Ancestry DNA test. Oh, let's talk about that one. <laughs> and it turns out I'm only 60% Filipino. And yeah. I and I'm mestizo as well, like my mestizo friend right here. I took mine like a week or two ago. Got we got the the, the details back. I'm 75 percent Filipino, and my, I have a white father. Yeah. So like, yo, I'm more Filipino than this guy over here. <laughs> so proud. And 40 percent Tonga. I know, right? Like I'm supposed to be oiled up like the Olympics guy, but like, you know, like Tonga. That like came out of nowhere. I did not you know, expect that, but. I'm um, really excited to be part of this particular panel and also acknowledging that May is Asian Pacific American. Give it up, month. give it up. Uh, How much people? You know, we don't need a month to celebrate. We exactly. celebrate every day, but I think this is a really great uh, way to celebrate the comic creators, cosplayers, creatives in this industry. So thank you, Patrick, for organizing this. So yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. And um, how many people are, are big comic book fans in here? Uh, and as well as like anime, manga, so you, very familiar with pop culture. That's, that's why we're here talking about it, right? Um, but did you know that uh, Filipinos have like been repping since the 70s for a long time? We've been in the game. We've been here. We've been here. Uh, like with the horror pulps that uh, were like very prevalent in the 70s, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, what would you call like some of the, the, the black exploitation films that were going on, and then they had like that whole zomba genre that was building with like Romero, but like in the comic book form, we had Alfredo Alcala. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but you should. He's like one of our greats that started it off. Uh, Nestor Redondo, Ernie Colon. Do some of these names ring a bell with you guys? If not, you should, because that's our history. We've been representing in comics for a long time. Now going into, uh, now with Lanil Francis Yu, Carlo Paglian, Wills Portacio. Uh, come on, y'all know y'all know Wills Portacio, right? He was here at Tidewater like a year or two ago, right? Y'all know Wills. He created Bishop, people. Y'all familiar with Bishop? Yeah. X-Men. And I don't know if you know, originally he was supposed to be Panoi until they made him African-American. I know, right? That would have been huge if we would have had Bishop to be Panoi. You know, I love, you know, I love Bishop as a character, you know, that he's African-American, because African-Americans, Black Heroes Matter, that's very important as well. But man, don't we want a great Filipino superhero out there represented? 
So yeah. Uh, do you guys have some favorites, uh, comic book character-wise, and or uh, creators? Um, I recently found out. Oh yeah. Hello. You're good. I recently just found out about a um, Filipino superheroine uh, named Darna, mm. Mm. and I had never learned about her. And I asked my mom. I was like, Mom, she knows I do this Comic Con stuff. She calls them conferences. It's really cute. Um, <laughs> And I asked her, I was like, Mom, do you know about Darna? She's a, she's a Filipino super, superhero. And she's like, oh yeah, she's like Wonder Woman. I was like, Mother, why did you know her? <laughs> Where was this when I was growing up? Um, but her supervillain is, uh, her name is Valentina. So I'm like, ooh, future cosplay ideas? <laughs> Maybe. Um, but that's and I'm going to be Darna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that was really cool, and now I have like this whole list of stuff I need to read um, on um, Filipino culture and Filipino um, superheroes. And that was like one of the main motivations for me why I wanted to get like this panel off the ground like a year or two ago because you know there's very little being a second generation growing up here in America, you know we didn't get a lot of those details from our parents. Nope. Um, so you know having to research this information was like Perfect. very eye awakening. That TV show ran from like the '80s until like 2010. Wikipedia wow. it. It's like, things been going for a while. And I'm like, wow, I'm just finding out about this? Like, the only comic creator that I really knew about was uh, Francis uh, Matapun. Matapun? 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 With uh, Aspen. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Aspen. Michael Turner. Y'all got some, uh, who's his big book? He did some work on Witchblade. Yes. Witchblade's oh. awesome. And then The Water. Fathom. Y'all familiar with Fathom? All right. All right. But, um, um, so even in just, um, researching for this panel, I just found out like, just so much, um, like the Filipinos have been saying that we've been here, but in the 70s and the 80s, there were so many Filipino creators in DC and Marvel, and like, you just never hear about them. Okay. And, and also, uh, Image Comics, so Will Spertacio, uh, had a great uh, chance to guest with him at Asia Pop Comic Con last year in Manila, mm -hmm. and what's great about um, Will is that, you know, he, as, you know, in addition to being a comic book artist, he was also co-founder of Image Comics, yes. and, so, and one of the co-founders there. And what is uh, kind of interesting in some of his um, comics uh, that are that are very specifically about Filipino mythology, if you get a chance to read into his Agimat series, where he, uh, basically the Agimat is a concept of a power stone, so think Thanos, like with his power stones. But the idea is that you know these stones, the Agimats, can like give certain animals like certain powers, so they've kind of become like uh, um, uh, like Thor as a horse, you know. So um, so, but I mean the idea is that it actually builds off of some Filipino folklore um, as well. So uh, it's it's available on Amazon. Uh, and so it came out in the 90s, so, but the, uh, having spoken with him recently, he's looking to re reboot like an entire series of Filipino-based um, superheroes. So I'm really excited to see you know, what he builds off of that. So still kind of stemming a little bit from the mythology aspect, but now that we've got like Chinese Wonder Woman, yes. we've got um, Hulk from... Um, uh, Amadeus Cho over at Marvel, uh, yeah. my, my pal Greg Pak. He's the, kind of the guy that inspired me to do this panel. With, that, that's why it's called, called Totally Awesome Asians. Mm -hmm. He had a book called Totally Awesome Hulk where Amadeus Cho, if you're all familiar with that character, he now gained the powers of Hulk and it was super cool. Mm -hmm. And being Asian, just seeing that he got uh, Justin Lin, if you're familiar with that basketball player, I'm a big NBA guy, uh, he made an appearance in there and then they started introducing more characters and I was like, wow, where was this when I was young? And, you know, just, more of these Asian characters are starting to come and play at Marvel, and DC started answering the call with the new Superman. I think Ken and Kong is the name of the, the Chinese Superman, if I'm not mistaken. And now recently in the books, uh, they introduced a North Korean Aquaman, or South Korean Aquaman, and uh, they have a whole Chinese it's Justice Korea League. Now. It's one Korea. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> so we're out there, people, you know, we gotta support that. We gotta show that there's an audience for us, so that way we get that representation. You know, it's it's back on the, uh, on yeah. the um, kind of the modernization of some classic Filipino superheroes. Yeah. Like, uh, Captain Barbell, he was one of the original like Filipino. He's like the Filipino Superman. But recently, in like uh, on like if you ever watch Filipino Channel or TFC, anything like that. But they've been like, <laughs> revamping that the, the, the those um, classic characters with some um, Rich Gutierrez, who's like a current um, pop. 
uh, idol, or not idol, like an actor. Um, and so they've been revisiting those classic characters. Um, I think Marion Rivera had revisited um, uh, Darna uh, okay. at, at one point. Um, so yeah, so there's like some characters that have been in like classic Filipino like uh, comics that are kind of being revisited now. But I think the opportunity here is the creation of new characters and new stories, some modern stories as well. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is we should start cosplaying these characters, <laughs> get it in front of people's faces, yes. and know. Mm -hmm. Get awareness out there. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite characters that are out there, uh, Filipino-wise, or cre uh, creators and or characters that we may not be familiar with? Because we want to make this an informational session. We want you all to learn stuff. Maybe there's stuff that we don't know. Uh, anybody know any of the creators or characters that we haven't mentioned that you guys are fans of? Dante Basco. Oh, Dante, my man, Dante. Uh, yeah. Actor, yeah. not a creator, yeah. more of an actor. Yeah. He was in a book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good friend of mine. Uh, I met him at Otakon, I want to say, and then a couple of other shows. Really great guy. Um, if you haven't, if y'all are uh, pop culture film fans, he did a, a film that was kind of like coming of age Filipino. Uh, the debut. debut. Have y'all heard of the debut? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been a while since the debut. If y'all haven't seen it, the debut, that's, that was my life growing up. I'm sure all y'all Filipinos that were raised in America can relate with that. Anybody y'all want to rep? Well, in the 90s, uh, in the work, work series by Wilkie Portacio, there was Grail, which you guys didn't mention. He was fully Filipino. Yes, the gold. The blue energy. Yeah. So that's one. And I think recently in one of the versions of DC Universe, there was, I think, either Commander Steel or Captain Steel, who was a Filipino character. Yes. So that's another one you guys can talk about. Everybody else out there familiar with Wetworks? That was like what, what Wilson's biggest, uh, he helped co-found Image Comics. But that was like his first title out the gate. And then I think he brought up Gary Alanguilan, who was like his inker for a bit. And then Gary is a very important name that I think a lot of people should know. Um, he has a, a autobio series. I think a lot of y'all might know him for memes more so than his comics work. He's like that very old Uncle Filipino <laughs> who looks like half drunk all the time. I, if y'all go on the internet, I'm sure you'll see the meme. But it, I'll, have, I'll share it to like our Facebook for this thing. But Gary Alangolan uh, started this uh, internet museum which spotlights a lot of Filipino uh, creations, characters, um, and artists and writers within the industry. If you get a chance, it's K-O-M-I-K-E-R-O, comicero.com, I think is the, the, the link. If not, I'll put it on our Facebook event page uh, for this panel. Um, I strongly suggest uh, you all checking it out. It's an amazing library of content of what we've contributed to uh, the industry. Um, so definitely check that out. Gary Langone is very, you know, he was part of Wilson's studio. I think Wills helped him get out there. Wills was like the main guy, you know. There was like certain uh, talent agents that were helping since the 70s to get like Ernie Colon, Nessa Redondo, Alfredo Ocala into the industry. Um, and if you don't know these names, again, these are our legends that helped bring us there. Tony De Zuniga, are y'all familiar with Jonah Hex? Created by Filipino. Tony De Zuniga created Jonah Hex. Uh, Josh Brolin played him in that forgetful film. I think he's a lot better <laughs> as Thanos and soon to be Cable. But, you know, hey, Jonah Hex at least got, you know, some screen time, and that was created by a Filipino. And not a lot of love was uh, known and shown there about that. So, you know, check that out. Uh, what else uh, who do we want to point out that, uh, that we should spotlight? You guys know Korg from Thor Ragnarok? Yeah. Oh. Big Funny Rock Guy? He yeah. was created by Carlo uh, Pagulian. Carlo Paglian, um, he did uh, some work on Incredible Hulk uh, with Marvel. Uh, I got a whole list of stuff. I'm trying to, <laughs> I can't remember everything. I've been so busy with stuff. But yeah, definitely. Actually, uh, going back to Gary Allen Golan, Comic Care was one of the, I guess, the former links to it, but it's actually his last name. Uh, AllenGolan.com slash museum. Um, again, if you go to the event tab on Facebook for this panel, I'll have it up there so it'll be easier to look up if y'all want to check that out. And I strongly suggest you do that. Um, besides Filipinos, let's, let's, cause this, before, uh, this panel here, it's been a, it's called Totally Awesome Asians. I have, I have pretty much, uh, creators and, uh, actors of other Asian descents on the panel. Uh, but because we, I have the flip squad here for this one, I was like, let's focus on Filipinos. But, um, like Greg Pop, Jim Lee, who is not familiar with Jim Lee? Come on now. We got some Jim Lee fans in the house? He's now like the main guy over at DC. He created Jubilee. I know you know Jubilee. <laughs> Um, amazing guy, uh, I've met him quite a few times, uh, but he's now like the, the lead art director over at DC Comics, uh, working on, you know, Batman, who name a property he hasn't touched, and that then uh, sales just multiplied, 
Uh, his work is fascinating, it's amazing. Um, but Jim Lee, we also have uh, Greg Mock, uh, we mentioned Totally Awesome Hulk. Um, he was recently at my Wakama Con that I did like a week or two ago in Baltimore. An amazing guy. And, uh, uh, and uh, another guy, just like Gary Alangolan, who's really about promoting us as Asians within the industry and getting us out there. Again, in, like I said, in the pages of Awesome Hulk, he got Justin Lin involved as, a, as an NBA player because he's such a fan as well of comics. And then he started introducing more of the Asian characters and starting like an Asian, essentially like an Avengers. Because uh, we have a, a, I forgot what was the team up. Did, were y'all reading Totally Awesome Hulk? And he brought in like quite, quite a few other Asian characters in there. Protector, yeah, the Protectors. I think that's what they kind of came up with. It. I didn't like that name though. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weak. Yeah. But uh, we're representing, man. And then uh, like with Superman, uh, Gene Lung Yang. Are y'all familiar with Gene Lung Yang? Uh, he's the writer uh, on uh, the Superman title, the Chinese Superman with Kenan Kong. But before he did that, he uh, actually had like his own uh, graphic novels that he was. Uh, doing for himself, and uh, some of it was autobiographical. I can't recall the names off the top of my head, which I'm so very sorry about, but you should check it out. Um, uh, do y'all hear y'all from me with Jin Lin Yang? Damn. Uh, yes, that's my man right there. That's my, well, you got my back. So I'm like, <laughs> American born Chinese, you should check it out. It's an autobiographical story about him and growing up in America, and uh, he kind of, he won so many awards off of that book, you should definitely check that out. And then that kind of then led to the work with DC and then him doing his thing with uh, Superman. Uh, he recently also, like last year, did a thing with uh, China Express. I think it was China Express. But it was reintroducing the Green Turtle. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Green Turtle, but he's actually our first Asian superhero. Uh, created way back when, in like the 40s, 30s, I want to say. Uh, but he reintroduced that, and then I think China Express. That, or what is it that, that? It's like the Asian restaurant at the mall at like every mall. Panda Express. Panda Express. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't said the green turtle. Hey, <laughs> that's the character's <laughs> name. It was kind of like a weird character, but yeah. It, it, it was like set in the 40s in like San Francisco. Very stereotypical. And that's kind of like where I, I feel funny about that stuff because again, because of society we had to kind of go into that because that's they would only support us and pay for us to do those kind of stories if we didn't kind of like talk about us. But it was, to me, it was the pandering in a way. I, you know what I'm saying? It, I hate when we have to do that. And, you know, that leads me down into, like... Gotta, you, they want you, but they want you to be that image that they have for you. Yeah. And that leads me into acting. As an actor, I've had to... I, I get cast as Spanish a lot, being Filipino. Which is, I don't mind, you know, Spain colonized the Philippines. So, you know, that's part of us. We're Hispanic. And we're Hispanic, <laughs> technically. But, like... At one time, and I want Phil to kind of, kind of jump in because I don't, I feel like Philip is being left out. I'm sorry, Phil. Uh, but you're, you're an actor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. Yeah. Um, one time I was cast uh, as a uh, model in Maryland for this uh, website and an online campaign. Uh, they cast me as a Hispanic guy for this uh, teaching you about like your health and your body and everything like that. So I got cast for that. Uh, I was a, the, 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 the person, the, the model for it with no voice acting. It was just kind of like motion. But Apparently, come to find out, I didn't know that they were going to dub over my voice, that there was actually a voice for that. So they actually cast a Hispanic person to be my voice. Okay, whatever. And then a week or two later, they're like, um, we need to cast an Asian voice for this other person that's in that same series. So they cast me as an Asian voice. And so when I got to the voiceover session, uh, they're like, I was talking and reading the lines, they're like, can you do it more Asian? What? what? I'm, I'm Asian already, what are you talking about? And, like, can you slow your tempo down? Can you do a little bit of this? I was like, you've got to be kidding me right now. Um, so it was kind of like a nightmare, you know? It wow. was like, over, you know, it's racist, you know? Like, really? Um, and yeah, and then I saw the person who I was the voice, it's, it's, it's unreal. Um, Philip, have you ever gotten involved with a situation like that and kind of felt uh, uncomfortable with that? Um, well, I turned it, I turned those things into opportunities because I get paid for it. That's true. Uh, and so, like, I used to do a lot of background work uh, up in New York, and I would take the Chinatown bus from Virginia Beach, um, you know, into Chinatown. But I always get cast for the Chinese pedestrian, you know, or the Japanese pedestrian, or Chinatown pedestrian. But let me tell you, those get paid. I mean, like, because, you know, the whenever you get um, 
like if there's smoke or there's debris or whatever, they keep adding to your paycheck. So I'm like, all right, keep on paying it. I'll, I'll keep being Asian. You keep paying me. <laughs> so like all the check clears, like I had no, I had no problem with that. I got cast as a terrorist, as a drug dealer. I was like, yes, an Asian drug dealer. Yeah, <laughs> making progress. Like an Asian crackhead. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're breaking barriers here. And I'm like an Asian homicidal. Like you know, some got Asian guy got shot in the head. I was like. My gosh, it's not a black person. Yes! <laughs> like it's getting better and better. So I think what it is is that whenever you get a chance to, like as an actor, like for me, I embrace it because it's like there's another, like it, it shows that Asians aren't just like the nerd or like working at a restaurant or X, Y, and Z. It's like there's other assets, you know. We do get shot. We can be crackheads. We can be, you know, terrorists. We're not a moral minority. Yeah, right? exactly. So, you know, like, so we. We can be in more than just one thing too. So I think for me, I've embraced that. Um, I have this whole thing of being ethically ambiguous. Yes. Um, so I use that. You know, I use that to my favor. Um, to you know, I'm very opportunistic. Yay, immigrant. You know, like make it live the American dream. Um, but I use that as uh, as a way to um, to make it work for me, rather than you know playing it as well. These people aren't casting me. Or I'm not getting the you know the prominent roles you know for these films, but I'm still getting cast for it. Like I'm, there's still a need for me and my type, and I am happy to take those on. Uh, and if there's a way for me to change how you know how things are perceived or portrayed, uh, for example, I've, I've had um, like numerous auditions um, for uh, some Netflix shows, House of Cards. Um, things like that. So things that initially weren't um, meant to be read for an Asian type of person, but they liked my my read, my audition for it. Like, oh, let's try you for this character. I didn't cast for it, but the fact that me being there and reading those lines and enacting it gave them an idea that oh, maybe you can be this. You know, not just a businessman, Japanese businessman in the background, maybe you can be something else. So I think that's where we can turn that opportunity into something more, if we choose to, you know, and not just be like, you know, the, the Asian immigrant waiting for the dream to happen. You gotta make that dream happen for yourself. I would get like, I got light-skinned black guy roles in uh, Arabic roles on like Body of Lies and Shooter and a whole bunch of other projects. I'm a, I'm a union actor, so I get a lot of crazy stuff. But just, there's just, I was just, you know, in reference to those like nightmare sessions, I'm like, really? Talk more Asian? I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, what do y'all think about this whole model minority thing that we as Asians get a lot of time? And Tina, I, I saw your eyes kind of go up on that. What do you, how do you feel about that? Um, the model minority myth. I was, I was, I was a B student uh, growing up, so uh, that, was, that was cool. Um, like, I hate math. I don't, I don't adhere to a lot of um, Asian stereotypes, I guess, with that. Um, and I guess with that, really, it's, it's more of like, an, I have an identity crisis, and I think that's something that like a lot of just biracial kids in general go through, um, where it's like, um, I'm half Filipino, but I'm also half white, but like, am I really Filipino, or am I just white? You know, where do I lay on the spectrum? Um, it caused a lot of anxiety for me as a kid. Um, it actually, I would say is one of the factors that led me to joining a black sorority when I joined college. Um, I kind of didn't know where I belonged, so I picked a place, and um, that's where I belonged. And um, it's kind of weird to me. Like I, I see these Asian stereotypes as kind of like that's that's not that's not me, but that is also part of my heritage. So it's it's something that you know I just struggle with all the time. And I think it's awesome. Can we give some props for her to talk about that? Because that's deep, you know? I think, I was it's, it's, I think Why when am I he, here? Exactly. I think all of us, and we don't get to express that because we're always, especially as men, you know, we, we gotta be, you know, gruff and, you know, manly, you know, masculine all the time, and we don't talk about our feelings like that. I'm a therapist, you know what I'm saying? There's a, we, I think it's good to go to therapy. therapy. It's good to talk about these things. Well, because we're her. not this, you know, this model minority myth that is just put out there and you feel like you've got to live up to this obligation, this perception. Um, but we all have our struggles. And I think 
that's what will bring us all together as people. Like we all are going through the same thing. Well, I want to dig deeper into that because you know, with you know being the, the biracial and you you can pass for white. Yeah. I can't pass for white, and so kind of a big thing that doesn't get really talked about in in multiple Asian communities is colorism yes. within the Asian community, uh, meaning that you know someone who is lighter skinned is more preferable. Like go to Korea, go to Japan, go to the Philippines. Every, every ad will is advocating for kind of a Eurocentric look to you. You can go get your kojic acid, you can get your paya, so, et cetera, et cetera, because the Eurocentric white look is still preferred. If you look at the roster of different celebrities in Southeast Asia and Asia in general, it's still light skin preferred. So like for me to be there as an actor representing the dark skin folks, the ones who've been called, you know, the, the dark skins with the Negroid features. Negroid. Yeah. The Negroid, I mean like, ooh, if you want to go real deep into like, some of the slang, you know, in uh, <laughs> Filipino culture. But the fact that, you know, if I can be a representative of like a darker toned, like a uh, Filipino or Asian that we do exist, we do fill a role in society, then that's another opportunity to make that visible, making the invisible visible. And so I think, you know, even even with like, uh, with the movie coming out, with the um, Crazy Rich Asians. Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, so yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it still represents a certain caste of type of, uh, of privilege. So if you are rich and you've got the money and to do everything you can to your skin, you're not gonna make it darker. You know, it's gonna get more and more European. So even in, in comics today, like, you know, saying that, you know, you know, we wish Bishop was, you know, Filipino, because Bishop is a dark dude. Like, it would yeah. be great to see a dark Filipino, yeah. like, superhero character, and not necessarily, you know, a particularly super light one. I mean, it would be great to just have any Filipino character, really, but the fact that the spectrum of diversity in color is still, like, a socioeconomic perceived thing. Like, the lighter you are, the richer you are, the more affluent and better you are, the darker you are, the more, like, you know, from the jungle you are, the more of a person you're a slave. And so that's still like a big thing that really isn't explored in pop culture, yeah. in Philippine culture, or in Philippine conversations. Sorry, what real Oh, uh, no, that's, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. just from the jungle, right? This is like, what this is for. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, you see, coming in here. Um, like, being, being Mestiza, and you see it, it's like on all of the Filipino channels, it's, it's, it's all these light skinned, um, Filipino and European mixes, and it's like they say that that's pretty, but it's like I, like because I am white or have white in me, it's like I'm considered prettier. But it's like, but then that's also taking away like I have, um, or for for example, um, so Philip travels to the Philippines, and he brought me back. Um, our Filipino jacket, and we was like team team Philippines. You know, we have our squad jackets. It's a lot of fun. Um, I wore it to a family function, and uh, my aunties, who are like full Filipino, they laughed and they were like, "Oh, ha, 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 look at you with your Filipino jacket! Like, ha, ha, you don't even speak Tagalog." And I'm like, "Uh, thanks." So it's like it's like the the same thing that they're like, "Oh, you're good. You're 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 light." Um, you're, you're a light Filipino, you're a pretty Filipino, but at the same time, you're not really Filipino. And it's like that, it goes back to that, you know, identity thing, it's like, where are we? And I think if, if we had more representation in, in pop culture and things like that, people would see a wider spectrum and we'd feel more at home. Sorry, a little more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's why I think it's our responsibility as creators, as artists, that we occupy those spaces, right? Like we, again, we make the invisible visible. Like as creators, we have that opportunity with YouTube, social media, etc., to at least make ourselves be known and be out there. Um, I mean, on, on a creator spectrum, there's a lot of really great Filipino. Um, Cosplayers, uh, Elodia Hosentiao. Oh yeah. Um, and so but she's done a really great job in um, in being able to position Filipina gamers in the Philippines. So she went from cosplay into gaming, and now owns like a like it's called Tier One Entertainment. But uh, her her purpose is to empower um, kind of lower income Filipinos who want to become gamers, professional gamers 
to enter that space. So breaking down those barriers of entry into that space. So she bought out a building and it was like uh, essentially housing these um, want to be gamers. So that's like another way of using your influence as a creator to help rise like the, the tide to lift all boats. I want to follow up on that. I, I like that you said that. That kind of leads me to where I want to go with this. How do we build from here? We got 15 minutes. All right, here we go. 15 minutes. We're going to try and give you as much information. 15 minutes. Yeah. How do we build our our community into and in creating this impact to getting that representation? And and like you said with uh, Elodia, is that my name? Yeah. You know, she took she went from cosplaying to gaming. Uh, there's a lot of photographers out there that are taking fascinating pictures of you cosplayers over here. You know, that are Filipino descent. But we need to get, I, I challenge those photographers to, to get more Filipinos in front of that camera. Because we got some amazing photographers behind Who the camera. Who wants to shoot our Darna and you, you know, hello. You know. Perry. There we go, Perry. Yeah. So Pinoy is, you know what I'm saying, get more of us in front of that camera. You know, uh, you know it's awesome to shoot these, uh, you know, all the cosplayers, but you know, get more of us in front of that camera. We have to, you know, be the captains of our own ship to get that representation. Uh, here we are penciling and uh, writing these stories in these comic books, but we also need to be the editors and the publishers. We need to build upon that, because um, that's the way we get that representation. We need to be producers of these films, not only just act in them. Uh, hopefully, if the script is written for us, so that, that, that's key as well. We need to write the stories, uh, but we also need to be producing those films and being the financiers of that. Um, you know, again, you know, it's, a lot of people are all about, it's all about the money. You know, it doesn't sell. And let me tell you, as a producer, I've tackled that in 40 years of my life um, to make that happen, but I'm doing it, you know, it, little by little. The, the, these are the steps we gotta take. Yes, I am 40 years old. Check out that melon, that fish and rice. <laughs> Asian jeans, yo. I love it. Melon and rice. Korean skincare. There you go. Don't sleep on your snail with your snail oil. So what, so what, do you guys have any questions as well, since we have like 15 minutes of anything we didn't cover or anything you guys want to talk about? Sir? I actually wanted the name of that comic you were talking about earlier, the, uh, the guys with like the magic powers from these elements and stuff like that. Oh, the powers. Oh, yeah, it's called yeah. Adimat, A-G-I-M-A-T. Oh, okay. Um, and we can post it on, on, I'll, I'll on, on, on the, the Twitter. It's a whole series based on that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put it up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As well as that comic hero, mm -hmm. .com museum. Uh, was there another question I saw? Um, so, this is, you know, an Asian hero. It's one I've known of my whole life. I grew up with this one. Sun Wukong, Chinese hero of ancient legend, all the way through. In the pop culture now, like, there's representations of him in video games. Almost no one really knows, like, the ancient stuff, but Journey to the West was a big deal, you know. Some of the Monkey King. Yeah. Ah, yeah. go. Okay. And yeah. that would be my husband's cosplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks familiar. Okay. He is partially you know, Asian himself. <laughs> love it. Mixed kid. And, <laughs> and it was just, you know, that is definitely one of my big heroes. And I love that he's getting a lot more representation in different cultures. Every culture has, especially Asian cultures, have representation of him somewhere in their legends. And it's just kind of cool to see that, honestly. Definitely. Love that. Anybody else? Any, any other questions that we had? Um, I just noticed a lot, uh, just in the recent years, like a little bit more, um, where we're making moves for uh, more representation in pop culture, like movies and TV. Like um, one of my favorite shows right now is Superstore. And, um, yeah. Yes, I love Superstore. <laughs> yeah. Superstore is okay. Um, now I'm blanking on his name, I love him. Um, oh, the, 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 uh, the new guy. Yes. <laughs> um, Oh well, also, I think that isn't the, 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 the kind of like the quiet one who kind of gets a little crazy her. Isn't she Pinoy too? She is Hawaiian. Oh, she's Hawaiian. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I don't um, know. Sandra. Superstar. Sandra. 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 Superstar is awesome. I swear there's Asian writers on it because yeah, there has to be. There has to be because we got so much representation. Yeah, there's like half three half or four of us on there. So, Try you know, it's right. And uh, also, Rose Tico, huge. Like, just oh, yeah. Uh, can we get some love for Rose Tico in Star Wars? A lot of people weren't showing that love, but we got it in there, people. <laughs> We have their representation of Star Wars, Asians. Like, yes. It was the first time I've ever seen an Asian character who like kind of looked like me, rather than like someone like Lucy Liu or. Um, yes. They, they always, they're always like, sexualized. Kind exactly. Of. And, um, and for the first time, it's like, oh, a short Asian girl, like who just looks like a normal Asian girl. And yeah. It was, it was so refreshing and like kind of, like I, my, I cried the first time I saw her interview, just like. Seeing that, yeah, I just wanted to mention her and how 
important that was to me personally. I'm sure a lot of people. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is, um, I used to work with somebody who was, when you looked at her, looked like she was just got here from Japan. Okay? Um, I talk about just blowing people's minds and totally shattering stereotypes that quick. So her back, her back story is that she's Jap full-blooded Japanese. She was adopted by an American family and raised in West Texas. <laughs> so, you, so people walk up to her and instead of getting this shy, deferential, they get Texas redneck yeah. as soon as your mouth opens. People's faces would just be like, what the hell is she? Like, Who the hell are you? It would just... Where did you come from? Yeah, and people, people had absolutely no idea. I mean, it was just so much fun to watch. I'm just like, it's like, you just really enjoy doing that. She's like, you have no idea. <laughs> There's actually a great series um, right now. Um, I, I kind of posted about it a lot about the Chinese, the double Chinese uh, in the Mississippi um, area, like how they kind of built like the South with like, through Chinese restaurants, like in the South there. So there's some really great resources out there. Like they speak with a Southern twang when you're watching it. And it's yeah. like, wow. But they've been there for like, over a hundred years, right. and it was because of them and what they've been able to create. You know, there are a lot of pockets. I mean, a landlord is from Korea, but she was raised in the Delta. So that was really like she's like eight years old with a with a real southern you know uh, accent. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, you know opportunities to help kind of uh, dispel that we're just one thing or we're all accented. And I think you know to uh, uh, to Margaret Patrick's Chow, point or dispelling stuff. Listen to anything by Margaret Cho. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But even but even with being active in like Black Lives Matter uh, and conversations about people of color, I mean, there's still a dissent within the. Um, uh, people of color community to whether or not Asians are actually people of color, and I, I always interject personally, always you know about how Asians. It's not a competition. It's not a struggle Olympics. You know, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's it's not about that. It's about acknowledging that yes, that you know every culture, every you know has its own different struggle, and you know when when we're impacting the lives of any ethnic group, it's all about you know it's empowering the culture of inclusion. And, yes. uh, and I think as Asians, Filipinos, you know, when there are conversations about you know, um, Native American kids getting kicked out you know, or, or getting called on for just being Native Americans in a uh, tour group, you know, college tour group, things like that, like being active in those conversations, you know, create a space for us that we are active in that. And that, um, you know, and, uh, that's an important piece of being you know, uh, kind of a citizen is being actively engaged in those, you know, I mean like the Starbucks, those two African Americans that kicked out Starbucks, you know. It's about, it's about not being, not letting yourself get swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. Like, we're here, and we've been here, and we're reclaiming our time. Hey, cool. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, on to I just want to say, it boggles my mind, you know, as a long time comics fan, as a kid growing up, reading this stuff, uh, being a Navy brat, you know, the, my connection with comics was, I lived everywhere four years here, four years there, because I was a military brat. And the closest thing to I had a, a best friend that I could always count on was comic books. I could always count on that book no matter where I was going at. I'd still be able to get like that next uh, issue of Incredible Hulk or Spider-Man. Um, but, you know, when, if you read these things for so long, how people still don't get that message of being a hero, helping others, it still boggles my mind how we still have that problem in, in this community as well. Uh, the racism in this community. So again, uh, you know, I'm not saying Asians are better than other things, or black people, white people, or this and the third. We need to come together as a community. If you're learning anything from these books, is you know, when you separate and you divide, uh, you're, you're gonna fall. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have five minutes left. Uh, I want uh, my, my amazing uh, cosplayer friends here, Philip and Tina, to shout out your Instagrams, whatever. And then again, with all the things we mentioned, I'll have it up on our event page on Facebook. Because uh, I'm going to be bringing this Asian panel more and more often in a lot of different places and it's getting more high profile because uh, I've been talking to a lot of people. I'm trying to do the damn thing. I'm trying to make this movement happen. We are awesome people. All of you here, all of our supporters, our allies, whether you're Asian or not, you, you are awesome and I can't thank you enough. We are totally awesome. So, awesome, my totally awesome friends to the other sites out there. Um, 
I am Viva Valentina. You can follow me on Facebook at Viva Valentina or uh, Instagram at Viva.Valentina. And um, my next con will be BlurCon up in DC. Um, it is a con celebrating inclusion and um, celebrating us coming together. Um, so there's going to be a lot of awesome panels on um, on being a blurred, on being uh, a totally awesome Asian, on the LGBTQ community. Um, so check that out. It's going to be at the end of July, um, July 27th through the 30th. And yeah, that's where you can see the rest. And you can find me on Cam at Canvas Cosplay on the socials, on the Google, um, on the Amazon. The you can buy my book. <laughs> um, so oh, he has an amazing cosplay. Yeah, yeah. So you know, part of the kind of like I'm giving forward is you know empowering other cosplayers, you know, of color, you know, of, of, uh, anyone really to uh, help kind of elevate their uh, if, if they're interested in kind of turning cosplayer creation into a full time thing. Um, but we have we've got tables uh, downstairs as well, so we're here. Oh yeah, come see them. They got friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's we doing? Cosplay contest tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, we'll be judging the costume contest tomorrow. Uh, Patrick will be emceeing and helping us out. Uh, that is from 1 to 3, and then we're announcing the winners at 5. And at 5 today as well, we're having a cosplay dance-off. So <laughs> that's just going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be prizes. And uh, for me, I'm Patrick, patrickstrange.com. I'm an actor, producer, publisher, showrunner, charity guy. I do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I'm a renaissance guy, I guess. <laughs> I just got a lot of love for this culture and this industry. And uh, I'm about trying to make our movement happen, uh, not just because I'm Asian, but you know, from the content of our character as well. You know, I think that's how we also bridge that gap. Um, so PatrickStrange.com, Strange since 1977 is Instagram, Temple Far East on Twitter. I'm also with the New Release Wednesday show. I got my boy Perry and Mac with me. Uh, we're recording for the New Release Wednesday uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I have cards if you want to follow us, subscribe to us online. We're doing a music video here while we're here at Tidewater. And we got a lot of stuff that we're doing. I hope you'll check us out there. It's a weekly pop culture where we talk about you know, the latest things going on in comics. We also interview a lot of the creators and actors that we meet. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Again, everyone here is awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, this shows that there's love for what we are doing. And you know, we, we got to build and help each other in order for this to make this happen. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Oh, Miss Marvel. That I love Miss yeah, Marvel. Yeah, Kamala Khan. Yeah. Kamala Khan. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and I swear to God, with the new Captain Marvel movie with Brie Larson, that maybe we can get Miss Marvel. I know that the first film is going to be like a throwback in the 80s, but I would love to see Kamala Khan on screen. Yes. First Muslim superhero, yes. One of the first. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you.